Hi, everybody. I'm Pierre Bouvard, Chief Insights Officer at the Audio Active Group here at Cumulus Media in Westwood One. And what is the very latest on the state of American consumers and audio? Since the beginning of the pandemic, the Audio Active Group here at Cumulus Media in Westwood One has been tracking a variety of data sources to get a sense for the current state of consumers and consumption of audio. So today we're going to update you with the very latest on consumer interest or concern over COVID, what uh, the impact of gas prices has had on consumer movement, courtesy of uh, MotionWorks data, and then we're going to investigate a new data source from Castle, which is tracking office occupancies. Um, across uh, 10 major markets. And then we'll update you on the very latest from Nielsen uh, from their nationwide study, which is the uh, roll up of all counties and all markets uh, from the spring survey. We've got brand new PPM data and uh, data from the diary market. So Google search trends is one of the easiest and uh, no cost ways to put your finger on the pulse of what Americans are interested in. You can search for any search term, in this case COVID, and track it over time to look at search volumes. And what, uh, what Google does is they find the period with the highest search volume. They assign that an index of 100 and then all other searches over time are compared against that high point. And so beginning in 2020 to the left of your screen, all the way through September 22 uh, on the right of your screen, you can see the major peaks and valleys that corresponded with the pandemic. The highest search volume for COVID occurred at the end of 2021, beginning of 2022, when the Omicron uh, variant surfaced. Once that surfaced, uh, about a month or two later, we saw a massive drop in uh, search volumes uh, in March of 22. And ever since then, we've been really at a low point with consumer search volume for COVID. The most recent reading in late September was an 11 index. That means basically search volume on the term COVID is 90% uh, off the high. So Americans, have really put COVID in the rearview mirror. Uh, health experts obviously have not. Uh, there's still a pandemic going on, but in terms of the consumer um, searching and their concern, you can see it's uh, dramatically subsided. Now, one new trend that is catching the attention of consumers is gas prices. When the pandemic struck in uh, 2020, gas prices were $2.58. They dropped dramatically when Americans weren't driving. And they started growing uh, uh, up to the low $3.20 uh, area. And then on February 24th of this year, um, Russia invaded Ukraine and gas prices spiked dramatically. In March, they were $4.33. Um, by June, mid-June, they reached a high of $5. So a massive increase in gas prices. They have subsided, the most recent reading, $3.71, um, still higher before the invasion, but definitely they've come down. And the question is, what impact did gas prices have on American driving? Well, they had a quick and rapid impact. If you look to the left of your screen, uh, the average price per gallon of gas soared up in March of 22. And then to the right of your screen, MotionWorks, which is the uh, geolocation data company that harvests uh, consumer trip data, you can see versus 2019, a massive drop in March of this past year in miles travel, a 15% drop. Now, as gas prices have subsided, uh, the drop in miles traveled has come back a little bit, but we're still seeing miles traveled about 10% below 2019 levels. Now, the question as you go back in time is what's been the trend here? And you can see miles traveled. Everything here on the page, you're comparing 2019. Miles traveled uh, really dropped in 2020, but by 2021, Miles traveled had basically completely recovered, and it's only been recently with 
not only the gas prices, but other inflationary pressures that have caused miles travel to go below uh, 2019. Now, what kind of an impact has this had on radio listening? So we're going to compare spring 21 to spring 22. We're looking at Nielsen Nationwide, which is the roll-up of all counties and all markets. It's published twice a year. There has been a slight impact, um, about 2% drop year over year in total. AQH listening about 4%, 2554. You could credit some of that to the gas prices and lower miles traveled. Um, but we're not seeing the complete 10% uh, drop in radio listening like we saw with miles traveled. A company called Castle runs the security systems for thousands of office buildings throughout the country. And when the pandemic began, they began a weekly office occupancy tracker. Uh, this tracker was uh, brought to our attention by Greg Shurstel from uh, Hubbard. And they are every week publishing an index versus pre-pandemic period of office swipes uh, in 10 major cities. Now, if you take a look at mid-August and the percentage of uh, office swipes versus pre-pandemic versus late September, there is a sharp 10% increase in uh, office building populations. Now, obviously, Summer vacations are over, kids are back to school, a lot of companies are wanting their employees to come back. So this, uh, Castle points out, is the highest office occupancy uh, that they have seen since the pandemic began. And if you go back in time, you can see how quickly, when the pandemic struck in mid-March 2020, how quickly the office buildings emptied out. So February was a 100 index, and then literally the first week of March, half in 2020, half of the office building populations emptied out. And as you can see, it took a long time to get back into the 30s. Um, last summer, we hit 31%. And this year, we're now in the uh, upper 40s. So we still have a long ways to go, but Castle is saying that the office populations are at their highest point since the beginning of the pandemic. Now, there's a lot of variation across the 10 cities that uh, Castle measures. To the right of your screen, the Texas markets, Dallas, Houston, Austin, are, are in the 60s uh, versus some of the other markets that are just around 40. So there is quite a difference uh, in office occupancy as you go through uh, these major markets. Now, let's take a look at the very latest from Nielsen. We mentioned nationwide. That's their twice a year roll up of all counties and all markets. We want to compare against 2019. So we're looking at the just released spring 2022 Nielsen Nationwide, all markets, all counties, benchmarked for reach against 2019. 2019 obviously was pre-pandemic. And so radio has retained 98% of its reach from three years ago. And among 2554, 97%. So a very strong story for radio's ability really to hang on to that reach. But interestingly, if we zoom in on 75,000 plus income, uh, what we see is American radio reach is actually 8% higher than it was in 2019, uh, whether you're looking at 2554 or 3564. So what's going on here? Well, Likely, some of what's happened is there's simply more Americans that are in the 75,000 plus income uh, demographic. And because radio is listened to just about by everybody, um, if there's more people in a certain demographic, radio's reach is going to go up. But definitely interesting to know that a dollar spent today on radio versus three years ago is going to reach 8% more 75,000 plus income people. Let's take a quick look at September 2022 portable people meter. Nielsen aggregates all 48 markets together to look at trends. We're going to focus here to the right of your screen on morning drive uh, with the castle data showing the highest office occupancy and summer vacations over and back to school. We see an 8% increase in morning drive listening. And by the way, this is a trend that is seen typically as you go from the summer into the fall, listening levels grow back as uh, school resumes, people get back to work. 
When we take a look at all the PPM markets and we look at REACH indexed against pre-COVID, we are at 97% of pre-pandemic REACH. So in the major markets, radio has hung on to all of its REACH. Let's take a look at the Nielsen Diary markets. And if you've been following this over the last three years, you've known that there really was zero impact of the pandemic outside of the top 50 markets. I mean, here we're looking at a uh, reach index to pre-pandemic in the 50 uh, continuous diary markets, literally no impact. The AQH, zero impact, steady as a rock. The QM, no impact, steady as a rock. So what are our key findings? The Google search trends reveals that America has basically put COVID in the rearview mirror. Search volumes are off 90% from the previous highs. Uh, in spring 2022, gas prices definitely caused uh, miles traveled to reduce. When we looked at spring of last year versus spring of this year, a modest dip in AQH, minus 2% for 18 plus, minus 4 for 2554. So a a little bit of an impact. Castle's uh, office occupancy data up 10% as we are here in late September versus August. So definitely the highest point of office occupancy since the pandemic began. And you saw the wide disparity uh, as we looked across the country with the Texas markets uh, having the highest back to work. From a Nielsen perspective, radio has retained 98% of its pre-COVID reach. Reach among 75,000 plus income is actually up 8%. Basically the same story in the PPM markets, reach retention at 97% of pre-COVID levels. Big 10% increase in September for morning drive, reflecting back to work, back to school. And as we've noted previously, the continuous diary markets um, never really wavered, never saw one dip whatsoever, and has been incredibly stable over the last three years. The Audio Active Group here at Cumulus Media in Westwood One offers national marketers, audio creative best practices, media planning, and we measure the impact of the entire audio investment. Every week we publish a new audio case study or audio insight. You can find it on our website, cumulusmedia.com, or westwood1.com and when you're there you can sign up to get a free weekly email of the audio case study and insight thanks so much for the opportunity to take you through the very latest on the state of american consumers and audio thanks so much